Hi, it's Leah and Travis here today giving you an update on how we can help you determine the value of a property, whether that's your um, property or a property you're about to buy. So we've got a few things to talk about, don't we? We do indeed. So we're going to talk about firstly um, the difference between deal uh, an agent giving you a value on a property and a valuation report that we can do through our valuation system with a licensed valuer. And then also council rates, because council rates throw people sometimes. Yeah. I think for me, our council rates don't really have much of a say in, in the way that we do business. What do no. you think? No, a common, uh, I guess, misconception that's out there is, oh, my council values me at 650, then 10 or 20%. A lot of people have a formula in their head. They think it's 10 or 20% more. It really depends. I've had properties that have sold for well under council valuation. I've had properties that have sold for almost double yeah. council valuation. Yeah. Yeah, so we do think, don't let that guide you when you're either looking to buy a property or just on your actual value uh, of your own existing property. So the reason values are important, A, if you're selling, um, you need to know how much you're selling for and what cash you'll get from the sale to then purchase your next property. Or if you're keeping your property, we need to know how much it's worth to get some equity out to buy a property or buy an investment property. So from our end, um, we can do a license uh, valuation through a lender. So because of our status with the banks, we've got the power and the authority to order a full bank valuation with no cost to use. We can get that way. So an agent, uh, an agent, he's the agent, a valuer would come out to your house. Um, they would do research online to see what's sold recently in the area and actually settled. So I think that's the key thing. A valuer can only um, go off of data that's actually settled, been updated in the land titles office. Yeah. And then we get a report back that's got photos of the property, commentary if, if there's any work that needs to be done or, or just any in general comments. So sometimes it's a pool fence is missing or something like that. Um, and then that will give us a number that the bank will work off. So a bank will always work off of our valuation report. They don't work off of a, an agent's uh, valuation. But Trav, tell me what happens when you're valuing a property, because it is different. Uh, 100%. So look, what we do, obviously, before we meet the client, we I generally spend 10, 15 minutes on the phone giving as much background information as we can. Yep. It's good to be prepared before you get there. There's nothing worse as an agent to arrive at a property, to do a to do an appraisal and give a give a client a valuation and you get thrown with a curveball like, oh, there's a new pool room, or you know, yeah. they just had an on, or a pool yeah. that they've just had on. Um, so getting, we spend a lot of time preparing before we get there. Then we, it's a little similar in one aspect where we do look at recent sales in the area, um, you know, with comparable homes in your area that have sold. But then there is that X factor like, Certain segments of the market. So, for example, you know, I'm finding, say, two-storey townhouses in and around the, the city of Marion area. They have um, there's a lot that have hit the market recently. There's a lot of developers that have been busy, and we're finding they're not, you know, the demand for them isn't as high. Okay. And we're finding that they're probably not fetching what they were 12 to 18 months ago. Even though the statistics for, let's say, let's pick a suburb, let's say Warradale, um, even though the statistics for that suburb show that it's in growth. Yeah. It can sometimes skew where it's actually at. The other one is, while we're talking about, let's say the city of Marion, they've just had a massive, probably three quarters of their council area, they've just rezoned the policy area. Yeah, right. Which is a, which which has meant, uh, to, so I've got a listing at the moment that's about to hit the market, and if we had hit the market four months ago, it could have, it would have sold to a developer. One into two, 700 square metre, just over 20 metre frontage, a no brainer. Now, that the, the, the council put the brakes on, those properties are fetching probably 30 or 40 grand less than they were uh, because they can't be easily cut into two. So there's a number of factors, not just historical data, but what's actually happening right now yeah. in the marketplace. So yeah. I think that's always important, action now, like get things happening now. Our yeah. clients do sometimes have some regret with selling yeah. and buying because yeah. they didn't action it quick enough. So um, another thing in regards to valuations is and values of properties is uh, ways that agents, um, really good agents will help clients even if they're not their actual client. So yeah. Travis and I had an example this week, one of my clients or two properties that were going to go to auction and now they've found another property they do want to buy. Um, and they just had no idea where to go. There was a big price range on the property. So Trav uh, jumped on the phone to my clients yeah. and tell me that experience, what happened yeah. to you? So, and I know that he watches this each week now, okay. so he'll, he'll know who he is. Um, so yeah, Leah's client gave me a call. We spoke a couple of weeks ago. They didn't, they didn't move on the one on the auction due to some integrity issues in the building. They found a new property, Royston Park, really confused because there weren't a lot of properties like this that have recently sold. So what I did, I went back, I widened the search to a 5K radius, went back three years and found some similar, basically um, newer dwellings in an area that's like Royston Park, which is traditionally still a lot of you know really old um, character homes. Yeah. Um, 
had a good chat to him about not just what they're asking and what's sold. You know, the, the, the conversation I had with his client was, did you go to the open or you've been twice? How many other people were there? Yeah, okay. what, was the, what was the dialogue with the agent? Because sometimes the agent, the agents can kind of give away how, where they're sitting. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, that your client, who's now my client, even though we haven't sold for them yet, but one day we will, I'm sure, <laughs> um, they, he emailed me last night with the offer that they're going for. With. Yeah. So, and I'll, well, I'm gonna see him see that through with him until they hopefully secure the purchase. Yeah, and I think that's certainly where um, having that expert team around you is so important. I know that we do it for each other. Um, we've got financial planners, conveyances, accountants, lawyers, that we can bring in as soon as we go, we've got an idea for you. So we're really, Travis and I, I know, are really good at going, we can help you, we've got someone that can help you. Yeah, probably the other one um, is, I also have a huge team of specific trades and whatnot, yeah. or even, so when I'll go and see somebody who goes, we're thinking of selling, what's it worth? I go, right now it's probably worth 520, but if we did this, this and this, and it will cost you about 10 grand, we might push to 570, 580. So quite often when I'm there, I'm about, what can we do that's a smaller investment that's going to give a bang, bigger bang for our buck to improve the value of the home? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So hopefully that gives you information. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. You can contact us through Facebook, send us a message, text, email, whatever helps. And if you've got friends that need some help, give them our number. We have no, no, no hesitation helping people. Yeah. Have a good day.